Hi guys, Charlie here from Christmas on Crestline. Thanks for tuning in. Today, I'm gonna teach you guys how to make Santa's workshop for your Christmas light show. Okay, so if this is your first time watching one of our episodes, don't forget to subscribe. We're going to teach you guys a lot about what it takes to program a Christmas light show, how to build props, how to hang lights, just a bunch of neat stuff. If you're interested in that or you want to learn some more about it, don't forget to subscribe. Okay, so several years ago, my wife decided she wanted to do the Candyland board game as a theme for our Christmas show that year. And she chose that because it's the closest thing you can get to a, you know, a Santa Claus type uh, board game, I guess. It's got the, got the candy cane lanes and the candy canes and gumdrops and got all sorts of Christmas type stuff in there. Uh, so she decided she wanted to do that. One of the props in there is the gingerbread house, which is how this came to be um, in uh, how this came to be created. We decided we wanted to do a large scale uh, event for this. We had a 15 foot tall cupcake, which was uh, eight feet wide, 15 feet tall, it was humongous. Made the front page of the local state and our local paper uh, here that day, um, or that season. But I tried every way I could to make this without legit making an actual house, and I just couldn't do it. I had the three side walls. I, everything I just had was either cheap and it would just fall down or it wasn't sturdy enough to get our winds. We got about 25 mile an hour winds today, and it's a balmy 32 degrees, so gotta work with what you can. Um, so anyway, I decided to make this house, and, it, and inevitably it became an eight by eight foot shed. It's, I just made it to where it comes, comes off in parts and it's easy to assemble. Uh, what I did not do that year because I thought I would just use it for one year is I did not weatherproof it. I thought I'd throw it for one year, it'd be done, I'd toss it away. But then after the season was done, I decided, you know what, I can turn this into Santa's workshop. I can make a holographic Santa Claus in there. I can, I can just do it up right. I can get some five foot tall candy canes. I can just do this bad boy up, kind of neat like. So, um, Went to go put it together this year and it fell straight through the floor. So this is a brand new floor, brand new base. Um, I'm going to use my old walls because they're still not quite, um, dry rot has not quite gotten to them yet, but it's close. But they'll be fine for this year. Next year I'll redo all the walls, but I kind of want to show you guys what I do uh, to put this together this year. So next year if you want to build one for yourself, you can do that as well. This right here is just 8x8 eight eight foot. It's orange right now. I got some stain that said clear on it. Turned out it wasn't clear, it's orange. Uh, but that's okay, it's weatherproof, so no water should get to it at all. But it is an exact eight, eight by eight. I have three quarter inch plywood here. It is treated plywood. Uh, this whole thing right now probably weighs about 200 pounds. So this is the heaviest part every year and it's not something you can do by yourself. You will need help unless you're just a giant muscly guy. Good for you if you are, do those push-ups. good job. Uh, yeah, I can lift this by myself, but it just, I roll it or as much as you can roll a square. Um, but this year I just built this in place right here. Um, so yeah, I built the frame underneath of it and I'll show you a picture of that. I'll take a still of that and put it up. Hopefully it's up right now for you. Um, but I'll put that up. And I'm just gonna show you guys real quick how I do the walls. Here I am putting up the west front wall. The interesting thing about how I made the Santa workshop is the floor 100% nails. There's not a single screw to be found in there. However, every other aspect of the Santa's workshop is 100% screws. There's not a single nail to be found in any other aspect of the workshop. And that's designed purposefully so it can be done by a single person. Uh, not, you don't always have that extra hand there or someone to help you out. So I wanted it to be designed so I could do this by myself, throw it up real quick while everyone else is at work or whatever. Um, but you see here, I'm going to put a single screw in there and the wall's just going to stay up. So very, very easy to do. The wall here is eight feet wide. It is six feet tall. And the two inner two by fours are attached at the two foot mark. The reason why this is this wall, and it's the only wall of the, of the four that has this gap in the center 
and that is done purposefully because that is where our holographic Santa Claus goes. That is where our, our glass screen goes. It's plexiglass, and that's where it's attached. So it, give, it gives us the widest view for our street audience uh, to be able to see Santa Claus. But yeah, there's, this is 100% screws. There's not a single nail to be found in anything other than the floorboard. So it can be done just by one person. Uh, each wall weighs uh, 20 pounds, maybe. Uh, the other three are a little bit more cumbersome uh, than this one. But uh, they, yeah, they can all be done just by a single person. And that's how I designed it, and that's how I wanted it. And it works out great for us. The other incredible advantage, and the reason why I did this with just screws and the walls and everything else, is I want it to be able, for storage purposes, I want it to be able to come apart easily. If I nailed everything in, then the walls are just going to get torn up. But if I screw them in, like I do, then I can easily just unscrew them. The walls come easily un unattached, and I can store them that way. So this way, using screws here, everything comes apart easily, and everything works out great. Here I'm putting on the next wall, which is going to be the, the north wall. It's a little bit more cumbersome. You can see how to use the, the bright orange tool there, and that is designed to be used to help carry uh, these types of walls. And here, all I need to do is get it nice and snug, get it uh, flat on the surface of the platform, and then I'll put a single screw in it that will allow it to stay stable. I'll connect it to the next wall, and I do use a speed square on here to make sure it is in fact square before I go on any further. But as you can tell here, uh, this wall differs than the front wall, and there is a two by four at every two foot mark. So whereas the front wall, we left that open to leave room for the screen and the hologram. And this north wall, there's a two by four where there's one seemingly missing from the front wall. And there is just a, simply a two by four, three, two feet for support. And you'll notice here on the top of this wall, I already have the brackets and I, uh, attached. And I just leave those in. I never take those off. And those are for the rafters to go in when I attach the ceiling, or the roof, rather, as it were. Um, so yeah, so it was kind of neat. Uh, it's a little, little bit more of an awkward uh, carry, but it is absolutely something you can do by yourself. You don't need a whole team, obviously. The more people you have to help, the faster it's gonna go to put up. And really, to put this thing up, it takes me probably four days, maybe three, depending on how it goes, depending on the wind. And everything else uh, if you have you know obviously help is going to go up more quickly but it is designed to be assembled in pieces and is designed for one person it's very easy to do all of the walls are identical except for that front wall and the front wall is where you have your holographic santa claus at where you have your plexiglass at but the other three walls are all identical except for that one wall now when you build it they're all going to be eight feet long they're all going to be six feet tall and when you attach them to the platform about one screw every foot or two screws for every gap here will will do just fine and i use three inch wood screws um, and they all they all do just fine to, to hold them on there the, the the rafters the pitch of the roof is something i wish i would have done differently if i have to, to do it over again and here in about two years i probably will because these these rafters are only going to have about uh probably two more seasons left before they're going to have to be re redone due to dry rot and what i want to make them do when i do redo them is i want to make them more cartoonish i wish i would have made these more of an a-frame style rather than um the, the pitch of this roof matches the pitch of my house's roof and when I, I had no idea how to build these. I was completely ignorant on how to build a uh, rafter or a roof for this. So I called Menards up. I said, hey, here's what I want to do. They said, what kind of pitch do you want? And I said, what? I had no idea of what they spoke. So I showed them a picture of my house. I said, just match the pitch of my roof. That'd be great. And they, about three days later, they had these five built for me. Uh, spent about $110, I believe, in having them make these for me. Um, now that I've seen them and that they weigh about two pounds each, I could have made these myself, but uh, next time I will. And there's a picture of the bracket that I attach these to, uh, so you know what to get at the hardware store when you go. And I leave those attached to the walls the entire time. I never take them off. 
and you can see there in that uh, still video I had you can see some of the dry rot that I was talking about we had an ice storm coming in so I had to hurry up and get these walls on so I, I did ask for some help putting these walls on uh, and you want to attach the the rafters for the roof before you put the walls on if you do it the other way around you'll have to take all the walls off because the walls do cover the brackets that need to be screwed in um, so you absolutely have to do the walls a second you have to put the you have to frame the roof first and here for our holographic hole uh, we there it's about four and a half feet tall it's three and a half feet wide uh, use whatever works for your workshop but that's what works for us and that's what we have our holographic Santa Claus coming out of but for your work workshop do whatever works for for you guys the best a little curtsy for you all right give you guys a quick once over where we're at so far so just put up the walls um, the way I store this is uh, undoubtedly a little silly I store this between uh, the area between my shed and my fence so it's all dirty and grimy and parts need to be replaced but for this year we're gonna work with it uh, what I have here is I have a hole cut out um, and we put up a, uh, a picture here of some elves um, kind of like a window painting you'll see that later and uh, that gives the power for the lights so inside here what this cutout's for, this is going to be uh, where plexiglass goes. That's going to be where our holographic Santa Claus is out. Every year I kind of leave notes to myself. This one says, Charlie, make this a 4x8 four four in 2018 and put it in front of the gate. If you don't, you'll need new decking and a new roof. Yours, future Charlie. And I needed a new decking, so I probably need a new roof. We'll find out. Um, this reminds me to iron the sheet before I hang it. Um, and that's the, the sheet here for the holograph graphic Santa Claus so and that's kind of what I have so far and I'll leave this back here I'll leave that open and I'll just tarp that uh, that way it blocks out uh, any any weather um, and allows me a quick entry but there's no need for a wall here because the audience doesn't see it at the street so that's what we have so far so I'm gonna get back to work it's about 22 degrees out here today and it's been raining ice for a while so it's a little bit stopped a little bit now so it gives me time to do a quick video or quick update on the video so I'm gonna get back to work now. Okay, now it's time to put the, the roof on. The thing to remember when you're building this is you're not building this to be a shed that's gonna last you for 30 years. You're building this to be a six week structure. Uh, you need to protect it from the rain. It's not gonna fall over. It's gonna be sturdy enough to do uh, what you want it to do to meet your needs. I know a lot of you guys watching this are probably in construction or frame or whatever and know a lot more about uh, building things than I do but this is just going to be a six week structure. This is nothing that needs to last me for 30 years. Uh, I build the base of the floor with nails as you're supposed to. However, everything else is kept with screws. That way I can instantly bring it up, take it apart and uh, store it. So just when you, I know you're going to want to do this to where it's nice, strong and sturdy, but it's only by design it's supposed to last me six weeks every year. So just going to throw that out there. Uh, as you can kind of tell here, Got the, uh, the OSB uh, half inch sheeting. And it's kind of giving you a bird's eye view. Uh, what I did up there, I took a four by eight sheet and that encompassed the majority of the roof. And then had about 15 inches left to uh, spare. So I had to use a, the third piece and just cut off a 15 inch spacing for that, or another 15 inch board for that. So. All right, so we got some freezing rain going on right now. It's probably going to have to call this a day. I was at least able to get the roof on, get it squared up. So we have half-inch OSB uh, particle board here. Uh, we got that all nice and lined up. Uh, used three sheets of it, of uh, four by eight sheeting. So we got that on. Uh, tomorrow we'll put the trim up, uh, weather permitting, put the trim up and get it looking nice and sharp. Had a bit of a setback. We got some a couple inches of snow that fell down that set us back about three days. Snow is finally melting today, so we'll be able to put a roof up on the uh, on Santa's workshop here. We're going to use some white roofing paper. So if I miss any spots, there's going to be a white background. So it saves me a little bit of paint and a lot of time. This year we're going to do something different. Last year we used some foam shingles you can get at Hobby Lobby or your Arctic Craft Store, and we made a faux shingled roof. Problem was we just used staple a staple gun to uh, keep those nice and tight. Didn't work out in the Kansas wind. They just kind of flew wherever and it, it's something I had to fix every day when it's 25 mile an hour winds and it's already negative degrees. It's not pleasant to go out there, not fun to go out there and fix that every morning. So this year, what I'm gonna use, spend a lot of time at the hardware store kind of brainstorming about what I wanted to use this year. 
And I want to stay with a white colored theme and I don't want to have to paint anything. Uh, so we're going to use the, uh, I, I call them shirt, church shingles. It's, if you remember when you were a little kid, you go to church or, you know, they had the, uh, the tile up in the ceiling and you used to be able to throw a pencil and it would stick. Well, I'm going to use that as roof cover. I'm going to put uh, roof paper on my uh, particle board to cover. I'm going to screw that down on the roof to make it nice and secure. So the roofing paper will keep it from leaking. All right, so I've got my roofing paper on the roof. Now I want to unbox these ceiling tiles, show you guys what I'm going to be using this year. Got these from Home Depot this morning. Um, in total, uh, I think I spent uh, $60 on uh, 96 square feet. It's going to give the effect of snow, which is what we're going to go for. We want the one to be white all the time. It's Santa's workshop, so of course it needs to be surrounded by snow and it needs to have that snow look that snow feel on top of Santa's work workshop. And this is what we're gonna use this year, give it a whirl. Last year we used uh, rubber uh, foam, rather we used foam shingles. And they just flew everywhere, didn't really like them. So this year we're gonna try this out, see what it looks like, see how it goes for us. All right, so we've had ice. We've had a couple inches of snow and all of that is finally melted and we can get back to working on Santa's workshop. Well, last year Menard's got this white plastic here. It's white all the way through. Uh, it's gonna be our trim. I'm gonna throw that up right now. Yesterday, I got the ceiling done. Today, I wanna be able to put the trim up and some decorations. And finally, hopefully by the end of today, we can get this all taken care of and Santa's workshop will finally look like it needs to. All of the trim I purchased was at Menards. Uh, got it pre-painted. And to just to reiterate, any time you do a, a large scale Christmas display, you want to do as many things as possible to save yourself time. And Menards has a very large selection of uh, pre-painted white trim. So I got that paid underneath $100 for everything, if memory serves. Don't remember the, the exact dollar amount. Uh, but it's, yeah, it saved me a ton of time, saved me a half a day. On my PVC candy canes, drew a hole through it, put an eight screw through that hole, and I attached that to the work workshop. I never have a problem with wind. I never have a problem with them moving at all. I do screw two screws, one up top, one at the bottom, and they always stay in place. At this point, you're kind of done. The only major thing you left, have left to do is install your plexiglass here. Uh, I went to one of the local big hardware stores, got me a four foot by eight foot sheet of uh, plexiglass, got a home. Exacto knifed it, cut it down to size, and as long as you're slow, you're methodical, and you take your time, you can use an Exacto knife to cut plexiglass. The two ways you will instantly screw this plexiglass up and have to start all over again is it has, they both have to do with screws. If you don't pre-drill your holes for your screws, you will absolutely, positively uh, crack this glass. You'll put your screw down, you'll get your drill, you'll try to screw it down, and it's gonna crack on you almost instantaneously. The second way is by screwing it down too tight. You, got, you pre drilled your hole, you're gonna screw it down, and if you get it down too tight, again, it's gonna crack on you, and if that crack comes into your major viewing area, you'll have to go back to the hardware store and start all over again. So just take your time uh, when you screw it in and make sure, biggest piece of advice, pre-drill your holes. For the hologram for our Santa Claus workshop, we used this year an FX Total Home projector. It came with a USB stick that had about five different uh, scenes that are already pre-programmed on here. You can go to their website and you can buy more. They're like 10 bucks a scene or something like that. They're not terribly expensive. But it comes with this screen, which kind of is just thrown up here right now. You wanna make sure you iron that as per the directions that come with it to get a nice smooth uh, look as opposed to the wrinkled look that is on here now. Um, and you, we put it back. Uh, this will sit back about four feet inside of the uh, Santa Claus workshop and it will project on here. Uh, this year we went with the, uh, the dancing gingerbread. We went with Santa in his workshop and we went with a dancing Santa, which was semi entertaining to me, but <laughs> the kids just loved it. Uh, the dancing gingerbreads went over huge this year with the little kids. So, but use whatever scenes work for you. Use whatever projector works for you. A home projector just works just fine. I just didn't want to put a $300 projector or $400 projector, a decently expensive one, into cold temperatures each and every night. So the $100 jobby does just fine. The only thing you have left to do at this point is to decorate the outside. However you like the outside decorated, whatever theme you go with for your computerized Christmas light show or your static Christmas light show, whatever works neatest for you, 
throw, the, throw it up on this bad boy. If you do wind up building your own Santa's workshop, I'd love to hear from you. So leave it that and maybe even a picture of it down in the comments below. Or if you have any questions about how I did something or why I didn't do something in this video, leave it down in the comments below and I'll be sure to answer you. If you need a part number or anything like that, I'd be happy to give that to you. So appreciate you watching another Christmas on Crestline episode. So I'm Charlie. Thank you so much. See you later, guys.